When I think about blood spot, I have to go back to saliva. And the reason I have to go back to saliva is because when we're doing saliva testing, there were certain hormones that we couldn't test. And there were some reasons why we couldn't test for uh, hormones in saliva. People who just couldn't spit or didn't want to spit, or people who were using hormones as a trochee, so they were, or sublingual, so you put them under your tongue, if it's a drops of hormones under your tongue, or a solid trochee that you put up under your gum, and that slowly releases hormones in your body. The problem with that was that you pretty much contaminated the well. So you couldn't then spit into a tube and expect that you're gonna get, if that's the hormone that you put in your mouth, it contaminates the, the well, it contaminates the saliva. So you end up with levels of hormone that are too high. So we had to have another method of testing hormones. In, in saliva. So those were the primary reasons that we went to, to do blood spot testing. Also, you can't test hormones like thyroid hormone or insulin or blood lipids or things like that. Blood spot is a simple um, nick of the finger and drawing blood from the, from the finger to put it on a filter card. And that blood, once it drops on a filter card, so each drop makes a spot of blood, so that's why we call it dried blood spot. So we collect it on a filter card and we allow it to dry. And what we do with that blood is then punch it out and rehydrate it so that it, it becomes basically uh, equivalent to serum. So the reason that we went to blood spot testing is because of, uh, we could test more hormones in a blood spot than we could in saliva. And it also allowed for a, a semi-invasive, it wasn't like a, um, you know, a venipuncture blood draw where you have to drive to a blood station, you have to have a phlebotomist stick a needle in your arm, and they collect the blood, the blood in, a, in a tube. The blood spot allowed, allows a person to collect the blood at home.